Good afternoon, everyone. This is the start. Good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. This is strategic... good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Uh, this is strategic management MMPC 012 and uh, we shall cover this uh, whole syllabus in six to seven lectures as allotted. So, uh, <clears throat> so before moving further, let's understand there are two basic words. One is uh, strategy and second is plan, which we usually say that what is your plan or what is your strategy. So there is a difference between strategy and plan that uh, strategies are for long term and uh, uh, whereas plans are for short term and uh, also the the time frame of a strategy is broad and uh, say uh, typically uh, uh, for three to five years or more but uh, for a plan it is typically one year or less and one and one more difference between strategy and plan that uh, in a strategy mission vision values goals all these elements are considered, whereas in plan, actions, timelines, budget, resources, responsibilities are considered. Right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so this is what strategies, and uh, we we will be studying strategy management uh, in this lecture. So, uh, we'll try to cover block one today itself, though we have. Uh, quite shortage of time but still we will try to cover this block today itself and uh, this block has three units unit one is about concept of a strategy unit two is about a strategic framework and unit three is about a strategy in global context so uh, first is concept of a strategy so as it is discussed that the strategy is defined as plan deployed at each level of management for attainment of objective and realization of long-term goals of the organization right so <clears throat> any comprehensive plan uh, which is made for to achieve long-term goals and any plan if we implement properly can result in fruitful results in longer duration is a strategy and a strategy is a, a quite a broad area to be considered strategies are used as response to change in environment they are adopted in accordance with strength and weakness all the strategies has its own strengths and weaknesses which we have to consider always because uh, there's nothing in this world which has only strength and only weaknesses and uh, <clears throat> what is the purpose of framing a strategy is to uh, seek out the opportunities which are favored by the ex Internal environment means uh, those strategies or those long-term plans specifically which are meant are made as per the external environment because uh, you you must be knowing that there are two types of environment one internal environment and second is external environment internal environment means related to company related to business only which can be controllable to a great extent. But whereas external environment, for example, government policies, taxation policies, inflation, etc. So all these are external environment and these are uh, uncontrollable. So uh, any strategy uh, which is framed to, to favor the external environment and mitigate the threats simultaneously is the aim of strategies. Uh, this is one more uh, definition given by Chandler in 1960s strategies strategy as action inclusive of objective uh, setting means uh, you have to determine first long term goals or objectives adoption of course or action and allocation of resources first you have to identify that which are long term goals or objectives which are needed to be accomplished and uh, then out of available uh, courses of action you analyze all the possible alternatives and then you adopt or choose one and then allocate the resources resources are scarce in nature and uh, since they are scarce in nature we uh, allocate resources 
properly, appropriately, considering the objective or aim of the uh, company or organization. Uh, next features Mint's work in 2005 has given five P's uh, for strategies. They are uh, pattern, plan, position, perspective, and ploy. The pattern organization has been consistent in following a particular course of action, means pattern, particular course of action. Pattern shows the past behaviors. This becomes the realized strategy. Plan, it means preparing for future or looking ahead. It becomes an intent intended strategy if intended strategy becomes a realized strategy then it becomes a deliberate strategy intended strategy means what you want to do realize what you have achieved in past or you are achieving at present so if there is a so if intended strategy becomes a realized strategy means it is a deliberate strategy means anything which you have done deliberately right means knowingly the next is a position in certain cases, especially in niche market strategy is a position. For example, fast food chain wants to locate particular products in specific markets uh, or uh, perspective, perspective, which means the strategy looks at the vision of organization. Uh, in position, it looks at external environment, whereas perspective, it looks at the internal environment. Okay, fine. And ploy, ploy is quite a negative word, but it's still it can be used. There is another way of looking at strategy. Ploy is a tactic used by organization to outfit its computers. And ploy can be used for long term as well as for short term uh, goals to achieve. Uh, next is characteristics of strategic management. So first is it is a formal managerial process. Second, uh, it is the uh, it is related to commitment of managers. It is concerned with execution, executive action. It is a systematic process, not a haphazard one. Related to top level management. It's a continuous process. Ends and means, because means that there are a number of resources and number of methods which are used uh, to develop and to conduct and to implement a strategy. The active planning, dynamic process, future oriented process, because uh, as we have discussed already, that a strategy is related to long term resource, uh, long term objectives or uh, goals. Then next is set of decisions and actions. So why do we? Uh, so what is the nature of a strategy? A strategy is set of actions. Uh, means there are number of uh, activities or events which contains in a strategy related to an organization with the environment because there is no strategy uh, which can be considered a lone survivor uh, all the strategies are formulated in a specific environment that's why related to with the environment uh, next is uh, provide a structure a strategy develops a fundamental roadmap for providing guidance to enterprise for making relation uh, decisions uh, and uh, achieving organizational goals and next is future oriented. This is discussed already. Okay. Integrated approach means uh, uh, <clears throat> various internal resources are allocated and we use resources so that the whole organizations can be benefited from the implications or better use of the resources. Next involve contradictory actions. Strategic actions are influenced by environment factors at times decisions taken on the basis of a strategy may be contradictory in nature at times it happens next combination of internal and external factors uh, okay and then system oriented the, these these we have discussed in the definitions of a strategy okay concept uh, there, there will be a bit of repetition but again since it is a topic separately given in the syllabus so we'll uh, discuss it quickly so uh, the concept the strategy management is uh, a long-term process we know this it begins with formulation of desirable future position desirable future position means what you want to achieve in future in long term for the organization followed by decisions regarding what is at core of the organization means what we are excel at what we excel at and what do we want to achieve in future setting up 
targets for reaching the future state because the future is very uncertain even the time duration is is uncertain so we have to divide our uh, strategy in a number of segments and uh, that's why we have to set a quite nearer targets to achieve a strategy enables an organization to obtain an edge over its competitors in the market by analyzing the resources available with the organization uh, strategies formulating strategies for effective and efficient utilization of resources so uh, Based resources can be utilized effectively. Matches the organization capabilities with the environment opportunities, and it is futuristic and organization wide process. Okay. Next topic is strategy versus policy. So policy is a blueprint of organizational activities which are repetitive or routine in nature, whereas strategy is concerned with those organizational decisions which have not been dealt or phased before in the same form. Uh, policy formulation is a responsibility of top level management. A strategy formulation is basically done by middle level management, though it is formulated but implemented by middle level uh, managements. Uh, policy deals with routine or daily activities essential for effective and essential running of an organization, whereas strategy deals with the strategic decisions. Policy is concerned with both thought and actions, and strategy is concerned mostly with actions, means mostly with uh, implementation. A policy is about what is or what is not done. A strategy is the methodology used to achieve target as prescribed by a policy. Uh, next is a screenshot from uh, IGNU history metal itself. Uh, the difference between strategies and tactics. So strategies are long-term in nature. We know that tactics are short-term in nature. Uh, they are basic organizational plans and they are supportive organizational plans, means tactics uh, support strategies or other plans. Take general view of organization, whereas tactics prepared for a specific purpose. Uh, strategies formulated by top level managements, whereas tactics formulated by middle and lower level managers. Tact strategies prepared to achieve organizational goals, whereas tactics help in execution of a strategy, help in uh, integrating organizational internal environment with, it, with its external environment, whereas tactics help in integrating various aspects of organizational environment, internal environment. Now, next important topic is levels of uh, its strategy usually uh, in examinations it is asked that what is strategy is state nature of a strategy and also uh, discuss levels of a strategy so <clears throat> there are three basic levels of a strategy corporate strategy business strategy and functional strategy so corporate strategy is related to growth stability and renewal Business strategy is related to cost, leadership, differentiation, and market focus. And functional strategy are related to implementation of the plan or uh, the ground level implementation of the strategy or plan. Okay. Next, uh, we have to discuss importance of a strategy. So uh, first, it is it provide the direction and action plan. The strategy itself is a directive action, directive plan. Sorry. Uh, next is identify trends and opportunities. A strategy identifies opportunities and trend, uh, and trends and weaknesses. A strategy define accountabilities or and also set responsibility. It uh, improve communication by providing better communication channel and medium. Effective utilization of resources. Allocation of resources means effective utilization of resources. And as we discussed earlier, that resources are scarce in nature. And since they are scarce in nature, we have to use or utilize resources carefully. 
next is framing for decision making and then it gives you competitive advantage competitive edge over the competitors so uh, this was in uh, unit 1 uh, now you'll to the strategic framework the strategic framework is a structured method used to define how a project or initiative support the key objectives of stakeholder so basically a uh, strategic framework is a structured method and uh, what does it do uh, it used to define how a project initiative supports the key objectives of stakeholders stakeholders of the business there are four components of a strategic framework first is business objective what will the project or initiative achieve second is approach approach means how so business objective is what what is your objective what is your goal approach is how you will uh, achieve the uh, objective right and then measurement measurement is how will you achieve uh, how will achievement be measured and reported means how will you decide that what is your achievement means there there will be two things na first will be objective that it is your objective second your approach and then you will uh, after approach there will be a realized return realized return right or achievement so uh, whether there is a gap between desired and realized if there is gap means uh, the strategy was not sufficient or good enough so that your plan can be achieved can be realized so how will you measure whether your strategic framework or structured method was successful or not right and then target target means what is the forecasted improvement that will define success target means forecasted improvement that means uh, what is that thing in your plan or in your strategy on the basis of which you can say that your strategy is were successful or not uh, again this this is uh, another important question from examination point of view and in examination it is mostly asked to write a strategic management process so uh, this is the basic process which we will discuss uh, in coming slides so first is strategic intent it means intent means intention basically a strategic intent a strategic analysis a strategic formulation and then choice of a strategy then a strategy implementation a strategy evaluation control and uh, you must have seen the similar process number of times in 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 ppm in cost in finance so it is the basic process which is used in managing almost all the aspect right so uh, we'll discuss one by one first is strategic intent so strategic intent is the direction which an organization adopts to drive its operation in a particular manner to achieve the expected outcomes so strategic intent is the term used to describe the aspirational plans your aspirations right overarching purpose of intended direction of travel needed to reach an organizer organizational vision so this is what strategic intent is real world example of strategic intent japan and honda sometimes ago honda made a decision to enter the motorcycle market but rather than look to imitate harley davidson or yamaha success because yamaha was a super success at that time success honda chose to start with products they were intentionally different honda's competitor didn't see honda as threat initially because there was no encroachment of the core business because everyone knew that yamaha and, and harley uh, at that time had a great market share but by carving out new space honda developed a loyal customer base and a strong brand recognition that allowed honda to attack competitors from position of strength 
Honda took a long term approach with a customized blueprint that ultimately won more market share than than Yamaha or uh, uh, Harley. This is hierarchy of strategic intent, right? A vision, core values and purpose, mission, objectives and goals, and a strategy. So all these points itself are separate topic to be discussed. That what is uh, what is vision, what is mission or core values or objectives or a strategy. The first is vision. Vision is future oriented concept of the business forming a strategic vision is exercising in thinking about where a company need to head to be successful so vision is basically a very long term objective in some books it is written that vision is like a dream it is written in number of books that uh, vision is Vision can be considered as dream of the company that where it wants to be in distant future. Uh, for example, uh, say um, Tata Steel. The vision for Tata Steel is to make India self-reliant in steel production. Right. Now, try to understand that if you are saying that you want to make India self-reliant in steel production, this is a this is. Uh, a very difficult task to achieve because to make India self-reliant means self-sufficient. So I'm somewhat self self-sufficient in steel production. This is very difficult. It can be said that uh, India can produce a substantial amount of steel. It can be said, but making India self-reliant in steel production, this is a very difficult objective or you can say it is a dream and and the, the basic thing of vision is that at present you don't know that how this vision will be achieved maybe because of lack of resources maybe because of lack of manpower or technology or anything but still it is a very broad picture where the business wants to be, wants to go. So this is what vision is. Vision is, is a mental image or future state of organization, right? Okay, so right. Uh, here uh, it is the line, the same line. We can say that vision is a dream, a distant, a long-term dream, right? An organization's vision, which is often called purpose of the organization or the reason for existence of the organization it is designed to express the fundamental reason for the organization's existence so as we were discussing that uh, the vision of uh, uh, tata steel is to make india self reliant in steel production so way back was it possible to even imagine to make India self-reliant initial production, but no, it was not possible because we didn't have enough resources or technology or machinery at that point of time. But later on, uh, uh, technology developed, evolved, and uh, new machineries and technology came, and new knowledge and information came uh, into the uh, picture. And then, at some point of time, one can say that now it is yet it is a very difficult dream but can be achieved in a distant future not in near future but in distant future so what are characteristics of vision uh, this is uh, positive and future focused creates a single purpose for the organization means it gives you a single purpose or objective for which organizations are striving uh, clear and easy to understand and imagine, challenging and ambitious. Uh, of course, vision is always challenge. Uh, inspiring and appealing place to strive for, and internal and external stakeholders can buy into it. Means people can believe into it somehow. Uh, works on rational and emotional level. Can be related to daily activities. Offers people's behaviors. 
guides decisions and prioritization of efforts. So these, these are basic characteristics of uh, vision. So next, uh, so what we uh, are discussing, we are discussing uh, strategic intent and under strategic intent, we just discussed vision. Now, second thing, if you remember was core values and core purpose. And after core values and core purpose, we uh, shall discuss uh, mission, right? So first, so now the second one is core values and core purpose. So core values are essential and enduring beliefs of an organization, right? So they are enduring beliefs of an organization. They may be beliefs of top management regarding employees' welfare, customers' interest, and shareholders' wealth. Could be anyone. Either these or some related. The beliefs may have economic orientation or social orientation. Okay. Uh, here you can see core values and core purpose in this diagram. Say ethics, innovation, trust, goal, existence, teamwork, and responsibility. And finally, customers. Customers are one of the most important stakeholders. Core purpose. Core purpose is the reason for existence of organization. Its uh, reasoning need. Uh, sorry, its reasoning needs are to be spelled clearly. The characteristics of core purpose are as follows. It is overall reason for the existence of organization. It is why of an organization that why why do we exist, right? This mainly addresses to the issue which organization desires to achieve internally. It is the broad philosophical long term rational it is a linkage of organization with its own people okay so this was uh, uh, core values now mission we have discussed that uh, uh, vision vision is a very long term plan or you can say it's a dream that's what we discuss right that's what vision is now if we make a plan for 10 days for a year maybe so it is very obvious then there should be there must be some plans at a little time pace, which can be achieved, which should be accomplished to achieve the vision. Because if you have long term plan or a dream, say for 20 years, or maybe say 50 years, there should be some little plans for shorter time duration that should you have achieved the plan the vision would have been achieved right so now uh next thing is mission so mission is uh, an animity of purpose resource allocation organizational climate and focus point for work structure The mission of an organization incorporates activities undertaken by an organization. So these, this is not a dream. These are the activities undertaken. It highlights the market target by the organization technologies adopted and product and services offered. A mission segregates organization from the other organizations in industry. The aim of mission statement is to answer the question what an organization does in other words it discusses the extent and spread of organizations operations means what we are doing till what extent we are doing next features of mission statement it must be feasible and attainable it must be clear it has to be precise and formulated mission should not be too broad or too narrow it must be unique and distinctive to leave an impact in everyone's mind. Uh, it should be inspiring for management, staff, and society at large. Next, objectives and goals. 
Mission statements are qualitative statements which are needed to be converted into more practical terms. Practical terms means more implementation later. Therefore, they are followed by objectives and goals. Objectives and goals are measurable form are measurable forms of target which an organization wants to achieve. They break the qualitative mission statement into targets or aims which can be measured. So implementation part or practical part is more related to objectives and goals, whereas theoretical part is related to vision and uh, the qualitative statement are related to mission where we allocate resources. Goals are achievable outcome which are made for long term and specify what is to be achieved in broad sense. The objective are short term actions which include a specified tasks required to fulfill long term goals. of an effective objective so the the effective objective the effective objective must be precise clear measurable logical practical consistent with mission means it should be in, a, in the line of mission only to achieve the mission only and produce outcomes means it should not be merely in the words or in the plan it should be uh, it could be implemented and it must generate some results or outcomes right so uh, so here at this slide in the strategic management process, we discussed first was strategic intent and second is strategic analysis. So now we will discuss this one is strategic analysis followed by strategic formulation. Right. So uh, this one is strategic analysis. A strategic analysis involves involves the analysis of internal and external environment of the organization both internal as well as external internal quite controllable external quite uncontrollable it is conducted to ascertain the circumstances under which the organization is operating for the purpose of strategy formulation the major component of a strategic analysis are conducting the environment analysis Assessing the existing strategy to check whether they fulfill the goals. Evaluate various strategic alternatives. See, uh, why we need to evaluate something? Because if, if there is just one strategy available or there is just one alternative which is available, there is no need to take decision. There is no need to make choices because you have only one but if you have more than one say two or more than two then you have to take decision that which strategy needs to be undertaken now question comes that if there are two alternatives available why can't we pursue both the alternatives alternative one and alternative two why can't we both pursue because of limited resources be it uh, raw material or efforts or time or capital it could be any resource so because of limited resources we have to take decision that out of two or more than two alternatives available which one should be undertaken and that's why it is it is important to evaluate various strategic alternatives and if you don't evaluate the pros and cons, the benefit and losses of uh, various alternatives, how would you be able to select uh, specific uh, 
strategy next adopting the most viable strategy and finally if if you get a strategy after evaluation you have to adopt it uh, you must have read it uh, studied it in various uh, subjects sort analysis strength of firm then weakness threat from uh, outside environment and opportunities available in outside environment means external environment so this was second uh, now third is strategy formulation a strategy formulation uh, formulation of strategies involves developing strategies at various levels of organization and business strategies are required to be formulated at, at global level corporate level and even at function level a strategy formulation is preceded by strategic directions which are shown by an organization's vision mission and objectives okay next is implementation if if you have formulated a strategy merely formulation of a strategy uh, won't work for the business because you have to implement you have to make use of your plan so next is implementation strategy a strategic implementation implementation is a stage where formulated strategies are executed means uh, are converted into action it is the phase of activating the strategies implementation of strategies involve exercising control over strategies while they are being implemented a strategic implementation is the process of converting strategies into practices implementation involves following phases setting goals developing plans structuring the organization allocating resources communicating plans and goals to the uh, stakeholders or any individual who is concerned to the plan or to the strategy uh, next is motivating employees and then establishing leadership next last is strategic evaluation and control so let's consider that you have made an excellent strategy and you have uh, been able to implement that strategy into action as well and your uh, plan or strategy is uh, successfully or maybe achieving its objectives that but is but is still now question come that what should be the measurement what should be the scale so that it can be evaluated whether a strategy was successful or not and if it was not successful if, if it is not successful then we have to make uh, necessary adjustments or control as well on the strategy so this is the final phase of the strategic management process this step ensures that the implemented strategies meet their objective if not then perform corrective actions so if if uh, uh, desired objective is not met or if the objectives or purpose are not met then corrective actions will be required to be taken A strategic evaluation and control is an ongoing process so the traditional method of evaluation and controlling involves establishing standards measurement of actual performance and drawing comparison between the actual performance and standard performance to find deviations corrective actions are taken if deviations are found means there is uh, there is a standard standard performance and uh, another one is uh, this actual performance this one actual performance actual so if there is deviation of actual performance from standard performance then corrective actions are taken and if actual performance is very close to the standard performance which is decided which should uh, have been achieved 
by the strategy by the strategy by the firm known as standard performance so if your actual performance is is near to the standard performance then it is fine and if there is deviation then corrective actions are required to be taken the modern approach so this was the traditional approach now next is modern approach the modern approach pushes from a continuous and ongoing evaluation of strategic planning and implementation means this strategy this uh, this concept says that uh, why should we wait for the time when we realize that there is a gap between standard and actual performance so modern approach says that the company the firm should continuously evaluate the strategic planning and implementation the continuous evaluation is required in case of long period of time along with the traditional method it requires exercising and control by the way of monitoring the the strategies as they are being executed finding problems and undertaking corrective measures okay next uh, unit 3 is about its strategy in a global context so in this unit uh, the is we uh, will discuss a strategy in terms of global or cross uh, border strategies and organization can go international by crossing domestic borders as it employs any of the strategies yes we know by this time that uh, it can be done uh next inter international expansion involves establishing significant market interest and operations outside and organizations home nation means uh, when an organization a business operates outside its national boundaries then uh, obviously it is uh, international or global business foreign markets provide additional sales opportunities for a organization that may be constrained by the relatively small size of its domestic market and also reduce the organization's dependence on a single national market uh, for example uh, mcdonalds or uh, dominos right so mostly all the firms are global now because they don't want to be uh, dependent only on a single market international expansion creates various risks such as political risk because the politics of different countries are different uh, that is instability of host nations and economic risks such as fluctuations in the value of uh, nations currency means uh, currency value of the host country in case of business organizations the surrounding environment is called as business environment it comprises of all the internal as well as external factors affecting an organization so business environment uh, you must have studied this in business environment business environment divided into two parts internal and external in internal value mission vision objectives structure corporate structure, culture uh, quality of uh, human resource means, means employees labor unions physical resources and technological capabilities so these are all our uh, uh, internal environment which are related to any specific business or firm in external environment there are, there are two micro and macro in micro organization customer competitors market suppliers and intermediaries whereas in macro economical environment political legal environment technological global social culture or demographical environment So these are macro external environment okay next is environmental analysis in global context international business has necessary to as to assess the requirement of international market in order to gain competitive advantage this is fine uh, environmental scanning includes scanning in uh, scanning the internal as well as external environments both environments there are several ways for scanning ways for scanning the environment some of them are as follows so let's discuss what are the ways or methods for scanning the environment so first way to uh, analyze or assess the environment is pastel 
Pastel means political environment, economic, uh, economic environment of the country, and the social environment, technological environment, in or environmental, and then uh, legal. So these are PESTEL, Pastel analysis. So if we analyze all these possible elements of the external environment, then we would be able to understand the market till a great extent. Okay, so here it is uh, a brief description of pastel. Pastel means political, political related to government policies, political stability, corruption, foreign trade, tax policy, labor law, trade restrictions, etc. So these all are related to P. First one, political. Then second is economical, economic growth, exchange rate, interest rate, inflation. A disposable income, the income which consumers, which are at consumers' disposal, disposable income, and unemployment rates. S. So, okay. Then, okay, fine. Pollution, uh, sorry, population distribution, uh, age, age distribution, career attitude, safety, and then health, lifestyle, in technology, technology initiatives, level of innovation automation, R&D services, technological changes, technological awareness. And in this weather, climate, climate change, right? And in legal, in legal, discriminatory laws, antitrust laws, various laws which are uh, present in the nation are legal. Now, second is uh, global strategic alternatives. So international business strategy guides operations of business in international market. There are four types of strategies. First is international. It focuses on import and export, focuses on import and export, and usually have their headquarter in home country, right? So there are two points to take from uh, this international that first is it is it, it is it focuses on import and export and second point is their headquarter the home country usually general challenges faced in this are managing global logistics adhering to foreign regulations and setting up overseas offices and more for example wine product producers from france and italy Next is multi-domestic. Here the business focuses uh, focus on local market and have a decentralized structure. So this is in multi-domestic. The thing to consider to remember is that business focus on local market and have a decentralized structure. These have quarter in home as well as in foreign countries. Now uh, let's understand the difference between these two in, in international usually their headquarter is in home country right but in multi-domestic they have headquarter in home as well as in the foreign country and hence operates independently with little interference from central headquarter it makes big example in modification of products such as Nestle, Kraft, Heinz, etc. Next is global. In uh, the opposite of multi domestic strategy, it leverages economies of scale to extend and reach the scale. Economies of scale means uh, uh, as you uh, increase factors of production, the production amount increases. Right? That's what we call economies of scale. And if uh, at a certain point of time, if you add, if you keep on adding more resources, then it doesn't mean that more resources will result <clears throat> in uh, more benefits as well. It cannot be uh, comprehended. Right? So <clears throat> economies of scale is to extend and sales, also called as hub and spoke model 
focus on both home and foreign operations next is transactional so uh, it is most complex strategy it's combination of global and multi domestic strategy every market have its uh, separate marketing or in department to focus on local uh, local customers for example general electric and toyota so how can we enter in a international market first by exporting exporting means you produce something domestically and then uh, export it to the foreign nation is exporting it does not entail a new investment since exporting does not require separate production facilities in the target nation the second is licensing so either you export your uh, produce or second you take license the license gives permit to an organization in the target nation to use the property of licensor such property usually is intangible such as trademark patent or name or production techniques the licensee pays a fee in exchange for the rights to use the intangible property and possible for technical assistance so if uh, uh, an organization is permitting you to use the properties uh, its properties and properties are mostly of uh, intangible nature such as name fame or uh, trademark or patent or excellent employees could be anything so after availing all these benefits the licensee has to pay a some amount of fee to the licensor next is a joint venture it is a combination of two or more parties seeking the development of a single enterprise or project for uh, the risk associated with its development so uh, for in joint venture two or more firms come together to achieve a specific objective because uh, there could be some regulations in the host country and because of regulations any organization of a specific sector is uh, unable to tap the market or maybe the the unavailability of a specific resources so because of number of reasons two or more than two firms come together to to achieve a specific objective to is to capture the market known as joint venture for example hero honda you you all must be knowing hero honda so hero was a different firm honda was a different firm but the game came together to capture the indian market next direct investment like fdi right? direct investment is the ownership of facilities in the target nation if you are investing directly then if you are investing it is your money your capital then you will be able sorry you are the only one who is the owner of those facilities so direct investment may be made through acquisition of an existing en uh, entity or establishment of new enterprise either either you establish or set up a new enterprise or either you uh, acquire or buy an existing business so by these two methods direct investments can be made uh, next is this eprg framework it is nothing but uh, ethnocentric polycentric regiocentric and a geocentric framework right so in ethno in ethnocentric uh, home it is home country orientation means your domestic country orientation in polycentric host country orientation in regiocentric uh, regional country orientation and in geocentric a uh, worldwide orientation of the business uh, it is uh, the uh, difference and explanation amongst all these four in uh, ethnocentrism main decisions made in the main headquarter in polycentric 
polycentrism uh, lower role of the main headquarter and why lower role of the uh, headquarter because it is related to uh, it is concerned with the host country only then uh, regiocentrism main decisions made in regional headquarters in geocentrism collaboration with local headquarters right uh, in ethnocentrism home standards applied on all market in this local regional and universal standard and uh, say uh, it focuses on domestic objective focuses on local objective focuses on regional objective and it focuses on uh, global objectives uh, high portion taken by managers from owners country high portion taken by local managers high portion taken by regional managers and uh, having an experience in different countries is a must to take high position because it is related to the uh, uh, global market right so uh, it is the uh, difference among just all these three so this was about uh, block one and uh, next block we will discuss in next class that's all for today thank you for joining you may leave thank you Hello learners, am I audible to all? Yes sir. Yes and, sir. Uh, PP, PPT is visible to all? Yes sir. Uh, let's start the session. The session is belongs to business law introduction. Some other technical words which will be used in business law. In this session, we have to learn about that technical words what are their meaning and what are the section mentioned in the business law for that particular word first of all what is law can anybody tell what is law what is law can anybody tell these are the guidelines that are set by the government of any nations or any organization you can say okay yes that, that's true these are the guidelines or regulation mentioned by the government to regulate the conduct of the people of the society as the man is a social animal he comes into contact with a large number of person it 